Hi, welcome to my kitchen where we're gonna do a chemistry experiment out of my full year lab manual. And that is called the molarity of Kool-Aid. Now, the best way to do this is probably with a big tub of Kool-Aid powder because that's sort of what this lab is designed for with the measurements that are given. Um, I'm gonna downsize this and just use two packets of Kool-Aid just because I don't drink this stuff. So um, I, don't, I don't want it in the house and I currently don't have um, in-person students to teach. So we are just going to downsize this. Um, you are going to need 250 milliliters of water in three different samples. And you're going to need probably a hundred grams of Kool-Aid. We're going to downsize that. And instead of our samples being 250 milliliters, we're just going to do 10 so that we can use just about four grams of Kool-Aid. Um, I think it's just under five. So two packets of Kool-Aid is going to be just fine. It does not matter what color. Um, and if you are going to drink this at all, which the experiment does ask you to drink the experiment, you don't have to, um, obviously. But if you do choose to drink the Kool-Aid, please make sure that you are using food safe materials for all of your measuring because you don't want to get any yucky stuff in you. I'm using three paper cups each with 10 milliliters of water inside. And based on the calculations, we are going to add the proper amount of Kool-Aid to make a one molar solution, a 0.5 molar solution, and a 0.25 molar solution. All right, here we are doing the calculations for that molarity lab. Um, so the first thing that we need to do is determine the molar mass of the Kool-Aid. And we're gonna assume that it is 100% glucose, I'm sorry, sucrose, uh, meaning that this is our chemical formula, C12H22O11. And in order to do this, I like to do what I call a QMT chart. Um, so what we do is we list all of the elements. And then we use Q for quantity, M for mass, and T for total. Quantity is just the number, like counting. So we would have 12 carbons, 22 hydrogens, and 11 oxygens. The mass comes from the periodic table. I have a pocket periodic table right here. So the carbon obviously is 12. Um, if we're going to get real specific, it's 12.01. Let's just do this for the sake of doing it 1.008 on the hydrogen and then oxygen is 16 even and then to get the total we multiply going across so this comes out to 144.12 this is 22.176 And this is 176. And then we'll add all of these going down to determine, because each of these is like the total of the carbons, total of the hydrogens. We want the total of everything. So we're going to add all of these numbers together. Okay, we come out to 342.296. Which is quite a bit. Um, let's see, significant figures. Really, we should just go out four sig figs. So the six is going to kick the nine up. The nine now is a 10, so it'll be 342.30. And that is our final answer for the molar mass. And no matter what experiment you did, like what quantities, um, that would have been the molar mass of sucrose. So the next thing we have to do is figure out the number of grams of the Kool-Aid powder that we would need in order to make the one molar, the 0.5 molar, and the 0.25 molar solutions. So while we do that, um, the experiment calls for 250 milliliters of water. I did mine in 10 milliliters of water because I didn't want to go crazy with the Kool-Aid powder because I am a grown-up <laughs> and I don't like that much sugar. Also, I was not going to drink it because 
I have nice shiny white teeth and I didn't want to turn them red. Um, so I did mine in 10 milliliters and I also didn't drink it. So um, we need a one molar solution in 10 milliliters of water. So 10 milliliters in order to go into the molarity equation, this has to get converted into liters, meaning our decimal needs to move one, two, three times with that leading zero. Um, so this would actually be 0 0.010 liters. And then the question is, how many moles do I need in order to get that um, for the one molar? Very simple, but I will calculate it anyway. Um, we would put this over one, cross multiply. We have one X, which is just X, and one times this number would be that number, 0 0.010, 0 0.010, yes. <laughs> A lot of zeros. Um, I'm sorry, that's not liters, that's grams. Moles. <laughs> that is moles. Now we have to figure out how many grams that is, and that's what you would put on the um, the scale or the balance before you even decide. So in order to make a one molar solution of the Kool-Aid powder, you need 0 0.01 moles of the Kool-Aid powder. And the question is, how many grams is that? So we're going to take this and convert it to grams using a gram mole conversion. So I have my molar mass and that is equal to one mole. One mole of this sucrose Kool-Aid powder has a mass of 342.3 grams. And I need 0 0.01 moles. I'm dropping some extra zeros here for the calculations. It's just fine. Um, so again, we're going to cross multiply. We get one X, which is just X. And then that'll be equal to the product of the molar mass times the number of moles here. All right. This comes out to 3.423 grams. And that is what I put on the balance in order to make my one molar solution. Now, what we could do is this same calculation um, for the half molar or the 0.5 molar and the 0.25 molar. That would be probably the most appropriate thing to do. Um, so I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to switch over to blue so we can kind of distinguish here. 0.5 molar is equal to x moles. Um, we're going to put the concentration over one for the sake of the cross multiplication. And then um, we still are working with the 0 0.010 liters because that's the 10 milliliters from earlier. So we're still going to cross multiply this. Um, and then we are going to get X is equal to, um, it's going to go out one decimal point further, right? 0 0.5 times 0 0.01. Yes, this comes out to 0. 0.0 zero five moles and then we'll do the same thing here where we want to convert that to grams so that we can actually have a functional number to use in our lab we know that one mole of this kool-aid powder has a mass of 342.3 grams and we want 0 0.005 moles converted into grams and Again, we are going to get 1x, so that'll just be x is equal to this 0 0.005 times the 342. And that comes out to 1.71 grams. Um, so truthfully, what you could have done, I don't know if you have picked up on it, because we're not having a real one-on-one -on -one conversation, but this is going to be that divided in half. Because it is half as concentrated, it will have half the number of moles, uh, half the number of grams. The reason for this is because we're working in the same volume. Had we changed the volume, we wouldn't have been able to do this. But because we're working with just 10 milliliters here, then we can just divide by two. And then to get the quarter or the 0.25 molar, we can just take this and divide that in half again. 
Um, so that's kind of a trick. I wouldn't necessarily do that for your chemistry teacher. Um, but if I had a student do that, I'd be like, yep, you understand molarity very well. No problems with me. Woo. No problems with me as your chemistry teacher knowing that half the concentration is going to have half the number of moles. That would be fine for me. Um, if you are a student and you're doing this lab, you have to use the correct numbers. If you followed this lab to the T, then you would have done 250 milliliters of water. So that number that you put right there is different from my number. So don't just copy because your teacher will know. Um, so that was the the calculations there. I'm not going to do the third one because it's the same process. That Kool-Aid powder is so powdery. I feel like it went straight up my nose. So we have our solutions here and they look pretty disgusting uh, because they are so red. I had my husband pick this up. I wish he had picked up a different color because this looks like a horror movie. <laughs> Here are the four, uh, the three different samples of Kool-Aid. So right here, we have the sample that is 0.25 molar. This is the 0.5 molar. You can see that I've even struggled to dissolve this stuff. There's still Kool-Aid powder in there. And then this is the one molar solution. And this is super, super, super dark. I'm actually going to show you what this looks like in a spot plate so you can see the samples side by side. Okay, right here you can see the three samples side by side. This is the 0.25, that is the 0.5, and that is the one. Again, I promise this is cool. <laughs> Maybe we should put that side by side so you can see. Um, so I am not going to taste these because clearly they are super concentrated and this is going to turn my teeth and my entire mouth red. Um, but so long as you have done your experiment in food safe um, equipment, feel free to taste them. I'm not sure I would even taste the difference. This is just really sugary to me. Um, but looking at this, we can make some... Um, Observation. So obviously the one that's most concentrated has the deepest, richest color. The one that is the least concentrated has the dullest color, although I wouldn't even call that dull. That we would probably say is dilute with this one over here being concentrated and this one is somewhere in the middle. This is the reason why chemists don't love the term dilute and concentrated because this, if you were to compare that to another sample, it would look entirely different. I don't even know what the concentration of this sample is. I've just added some water to the 0.25, but I do know that this is now the most dilute one in the tray. So this is why chemists don't really prefer the term dilute and concentrated when we're describing solutions. Instead, we would like to be able to quantify exactly how much Kool-Aid powder is in each of these samples. Thanks for joining me in our chemistry experiment in my kitchen. I appreciate you being here. Please subscribe so you don't miss the next lesson or the next lab. And if you need any materials or if you're interested in the lab book, there is links in the description below the video. See you next time.